Hello. Chaim Malevsky here on a new running track for these times. This is a little cul-de-sac. It's at the end of the bridle path. So this is for now. It's a quiet space where very few people are on, even on a Sunday. So I'm going to use this for our running commentary, number 94. So this is a thought that I learned a few weeks ago and I just never had a chance to share it. It's from Parshat Kedoshim. We have an interesting mitzvah that is not commonly known called Orla. Orla is it's forbidden fruit. There's a few different meanings to Arla, but in this context, um, even the circumcision um, is called Arla also. Um, but in this context, we're talking about the mitzvah, biblical requirement, that when you plant a fruit tree, you cannot use the fruit for the first three years at all. Anywhere, in Israel, America, all over the world. Three years, the fruits are forbidden. The fourth year, it's holy. And the holiness over here means that in Israel, the people were allowed to take the fruit to Jerusalem and eat it there, or to exchange the fruit to sell it and exchange its value and use it in Jerusalem. It's holy. The fruit, fourth year, the fruit is holy. It's usable in certain times, in certain places, in a holy time and location. The fifth year, the fruit is open for consumption for all. And that's known as the mitzvah of Arla. Ayin Resh Lamed Hay, or O-R-L-A. You can look it up. Lots of laws about it, but here's of course, we're going to share something from the Rebbe. Fascinating, as always. It brings a new insight and a relevance to us in this whole concept, which is kind of boring if you're not a farmer. <laughs> if you're a farmer, you need to know. This is a fruit tree. Three years, I can't use it. Fourth year, I could bring it to Jerusalem. Fifth year, it's open for all. And that's why, by the way, so important even on fruits that are packaged and even unpackaged fruits so uh, it's important to know where fruits come from because if something that's one of the reasons why it's important because if some fruits coming from Israel even today we can't have even if they sell it here in America different conversation let's dive into this point over here so the Rebbe says from a mystical perspective what was the cause of this Arla but where did it come from? Maybe it says something extraordinary. It says that the first mitzvah that God gave in the Torah, it's not commonly known as the first mitzvah, but it was. The first commandment that God gave in the Torah was to Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava, and he said, don't eat from this tree. And the first sin, the first transgression, was exactly that, that they ate from that tree. Now, what is this eating of the tree? What does it mean? What kind of fruit was it? It's a long story, but there's lots of different explanations or interpretations and takes on that. Most people think it's an apple. Other people think it's an s -rogue. In this take, the Rebbe quotes the, the Zohar, the mystical teachings, that it was actually grapes that Chava squeezed and she made it into wine or juice or grape juice or wine. And what God was asking of Adam was to just wait three hours because Adam was created on a Friday and a Friday afternoon. And God said, wait three hours until Shabbos. 
and you can make kiddush on that wine. And all he had to do was wait three hours. But he didn't. He didn't even wait three hours. So there are other mystical interpretations about the temptation of the sin, that it wasn't only fruit, and that it was a relationship, a union between Adam and Chava. But let's just take, for the sake of simplicity, it was a fruit that was beautiful, that was tasty, that was attractive, and God told Adam, wait three hours, and after that you can have your wine. And he didn't. Because of that, says the Zohar, the Kabbalah, God said, Adam, you couldn't wait three hours for the fruit of the tree. I will now impose a three-year wait for your children, for your descendants, before they can eat from the fruits of the tree. And that's Arla. That's what the mitzvah of Arla is about. That we have to wait three years in exchange for the three hours that Adam didn't wait. And the Rebbe goes on and explains a little bit more and says that in our service to God, so many different ways we serve. Some are external, some are more internal, cutting to the chase when we eat food and drink. It's an internal service. You're actually bringing it into your physical body. And that, says the Rebbe, because of the internal part of this, uh, the internal aspect of the service, it's a deeper, has a deeper effect on us. And therefore, we need to prepare for it more than we might for another kind of service. Therefore, says the Rebbe, that the food, the food intake, is a big part of our lives. And God says, you know, I want you to prepare for it. I want you to restrain yourself for three years before you take in this food into your body and it becomes part of you. And that's part of the preparation. So that's about Arla. Now, what does that have to do with us today? The Rebbe finds a beautiful correlation and relevance to this mitzvah in our day-to-day -day service, in our daily service. And what is that? The Rebbe says that in a daily service, we have the, we have the, the stages in which we start our day. The first, there's three stages that are meant to be. First is prayer, then is Torah study, and then is work. So those are the three stages, prayer, Torah, and work. And it really explains that the prayer is referring to the Amida. In the Amida, we stand with our feet together, with our attention focused. We don't think about anything else. We just recite the words and we pray to God. And we are completely, the word is batal. Batal means just, you're not there. There's no one there, you're just God. There's no ego involved. There's no work involved, there's no service. We're not doing anything but being subservient at that moment to God. Then, after that, to go from that right into the daily work, daily work is not so productive. And therefore, what we need to do is start st study a little bit of Torah. So we study a little Torah. So from the prayer, we're supposed to go learn Torah. And that Torah study acts as a bridge for us to take the deep meditative state we were in, in prayer, and be able to bridge it and trans translate that energy into dealing with the world and making this world a holy place, which is the purpose of it all. So the Rebbe says these three stages 
or similar to the th first three years of our life in which we can't have any benefit at all from the fruit and the fourth year where we can benefit from the fruit but it's holy and only in a holy place and that's similar to the idea of going to a, a yeshiva or a Beit Midrash and studying Torah so doing something holy in a holy place like the fourth year and then we dive into work we get to work and that's like the fifth year and our purpose is to elevate the world to elevate the Gashmis, the physical it's a little noisy here you know. that's where the trees are these are the roads and sometimes the roads they cross over with other things noisy noisy trucks okay so anyway so that's the bottom line is that the Rebbe says that the whole purpose of all the five years of the waiting and all the preparation is the diving into the physical world and elevating the physical world to make it a holy place that's it for today hope you understood appreciate it, enjoy it, and share god bless you all take care live from central park thanks for joining